please watch the following videos. It may mean the difference between life or death of our country, your children, your grandchildren, your spouse, and maybe even yourself. Thank you very much. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Please sit down. Thank you. Thank you. It's my privilege to be here in Gettysburg, hallowed ground where so many lives were given in service to freedom. Amazing place. President Lincoln served in a time of division like we've never seen before. It is my hope that we can look at his example to heal the divisions we are living through right now. We are a very divided nation. I'm not a politician and have never wanted to be a politician. Believe me. But when I saw the trouble our country was in, I knew I couldn't stand by and watch any longer. Our country has been so good to me. I love our country, and I felt I had to act. I've seen the system up close and personal for many years. I've been a major part of it. I know how the game works in Washington and on Wall Street. And I know how they've rigged the rules of the game against everyday Americans. The rules are rigged. Nearly one in four Americans in their prime earning years isn't even working. One in five households have no one with a job. 45 million Americans are on food stamps, and 47 million are living in poverty. We have failed our inner cities and, in so doing, have failed our African-American and Hispanic communities. We've misguided military adventures overseas and wars that go on forever that just cannot be won by the people that are doing it now. They don't know how to win the wars. At home, we have our great veterans dying while waiting for medical care. Change has to come from outside our very broken system. Our system is broken. The fact that Washington and the Washington establishment has tried so hard to stop our campaign is only more proof that our campaign represents the kind of change that only arrives once in a lifetime. The system is totally rigged and broken. First, the issue of voter fraud. According to Pew, there are 24 million voter registrations in the United States that are either invalid or significantly inaccurate. And when I say that, there are such inaccuracies, it's unbelievable. 1.8 million dead people are registered to vote. And some of them are voting. I wonder how that happens. 2.8 million people are registered in more than one state. These are numbers, folks. These are numbers. 14% of non-citizens are registered to vote. The system is also rigged because Hillary Clinton 
should have been precluded from running for the presidency of the United States. But the FBI and the Justice Department covered up her crimes, which included lying to the FBI and Congress on numerous occasions, and included saying, I do not recall to the FBI on 39 separate times. She recalls everything else, but 39 separate times. She said, I do not recall. Well, that's a lie also. <laughs> then there is the deletion of at least 33,000 emails after receiving a subpoena from the United States Congress. That's after receiving the subpoena. As an example, it was announced this week that the highly respected four-star general, James Cartwright, may be sentenced to up to five years in prison with a massive fine for lying on one occasion to the FBI. And he said he did that for national security reasons. Highly respected man, a four-star general. This took place two days ago. How must he feel? A big part of the rigging of this election is the fact that Hillary is being allowed to run despite having broken so many laws on so many different occasions. Why is she allowed to run? The dishonest mainstream media is also part and a major part of this corruption. They're corrupt. They lie and fabricate stories to make a candidate that is not their preferred choice look as bad and even dangerous as possible. At my rallies, they never show or talk about the massive crowd size and try to diminish all of our events. On the other hand, they don't show the small size of Hillary's crowds, but in fact, talk about how many people are there. Very small crowds. You know it. They know it. Everybody knows it. Over the last two days, three highly respected national polls said we're in first place. And one of those pollsters was the most accurate poll on the last two cycles. But the media refuses to even say it or put that word out. They refuse to talk about it. They're trying desperately to suppress my vote and the voice of the American people. As an example of the power structure I'm fighting, AT&T is buying Time Warner and thus CNN, a deal we will not approve in my administration because it's too much concentration of power in the hands of too few. <laughs> Likewise, Amazon, which, through its ownership, controls the Washington Post, should be paying massive taxes, but it's not paying. And it's a very unfair playing field. And you see what that's happening and what that's doing to department stores all over the country. Very, very unfair. And you're talking about billions and billions of dollars. They should be paying those taxes. Additionally, Comcast's purchase of NBC concentrates far too much power in one massive entity that is trying to tell the voters what to think and what to do. Deals like this destroy democracy. And we'll look at breaking that deal up and other deals like that. This should never, ever have been approved in the first place. They're trying to poison the mind of the American voter. Every woman lied when they came forward to hurt my campaign. Total fabrication. 
The events never happened. Never. All of these liars will be sued after the election is over. But a simple phone call placed to the biggest newspapers or television networks gets them wall-to-wall -wall coverage with virtually no fact-checking whatsoever. Here is why this is relevant to you. If they can fight somebody like me, who has unlimited resources to fight back, just look at what they can do to you, your jobs, your security, your education, your health care, the violation of religious liberty, the theft of your Second Amendment, the loss of your factories, your homes, and much more. Look at what they've done to you with your jobs. It has just been learned on video that the violent protests at some of my rallies, like in Chicago, where police and others were seriously hurt, you saw that, blood pouring down their face, were caused by paid, paid DNC and Clinton campaign operatives. Now, we didn't know this. We didn't know this. This just came out two days ago on tape. We didn't know this. We were amazed at the level of violence. These were paid operatives, paid by the DNC and probably the Clinton campaign. This is a criminal act. Policemen were badly hurt, and so were many others. And these people should be prosecuted. But, but because of the rigged system, they probably won't be. Just like we found out about these paid violent protesters, it was probably the DNC and the Clinton campaign that put forward these liars with their fabricated stories. But we'll find out about their involvement at a later date through litigation. And I look so forward to doing that. The rigging of the system is designed for one reason to keep the corrupt establishment and special interests in power at your expense, at everybody's expense. I have no special interest but you, the American voter. I didn't have to do this, believe me. There's nothing easy about it. But I had to do it. I love our country. I love the people of our country. And I felt I had to do it. Thank you. One thing we all know is that we will never solve our problems by relying on the same politicians who created these problems in the first place. Hillary Clinton is not running against me. She's running against change. And she's running against all of the American people and all of the American voters. We now find ourselves at that very special fork in the road. Do we repeat the mistakes of the past, or do we choose to believe that a great future, yet unwritten, still lies ahead for us and for our wonderful, beloved country? I think it does. I know it does. My economic plan will deliver at least 25 million jobs in one decade. Now, our jobs have been taken away. They've gone to Mexico. They've gone to so many other countries. It's a one-lane highway where they get the jobs, they get the factories, they get the money, and we get the drugs, and we get the unemployment, and it's going to change, believe me. And it's going to change fast. And that goes for all countries. When you look at China, when you look at every country, every trade deal we have is horrible. And we should be ashamed of a people and the people that let those deals happen. They're defective, and they knew they were defective. And they were done for a reason. And believe me, they will be unwound so fast. And we will have trade. We will have great trade. 
and it'll be free trade, but it'll be fair trade and it'll be real. My security plan, so important. They've taken the jobs from us. My security plan will bring safety to our poorest communities. My ethics plan will end the corruption in our government. We will... The corruption is massive. We will drain the swamp in Washington, D.C. and replace it with a new government of, by, and for the people. Believe me. That is why I have chosen Gettysburg to unveil this contract. I'm asking the American people to rise above the noise and the clutter of our broken politics and to embrace that great faith and optimism that has always been the central ingredient in the American character. And there is nothing better or stronger than the American character. I am asking the American people to dream big once again. What follows is my 100-day action plan to make America great again. It's a contract between Donald J. Trump and the American voter, and it begins with bringing honesty, accountability, and change to Washington, D.C. Therefore, on the first day of my term of office, my administration will immediately pursue the following six measures to clean up the corruption and special interest collusion in Washington. First, a constitutional amendment to impose term limits on all members of Congress. Second, a hiring freeze on all federal employees to reduce federal workforce through attrition, exempting military, public safety, and public health. Third, a requirement that for every new federal regulation, two existing regulations must be eliminated. Regulations are killing our country and our jobs. Fourth, a five-year ban on White House and congressional officials becoming lobbyists after they leave government service. Making a fortune. Fifth, a lifetime ban on White House officials lobbying on behalf of a foreign government. Very bad. Six, a complete ban on foreign lobbyists raising money for American elections. That's what's happening. On the same day, I will begin taking, and really taking strongly, seven actions to protect American workers. Our American workers have been treated so badly by politicians that don't have their interest in heart. And we're going to change that. We're going to change that very, very fast. First, I will announce my intention to totally renegotiate NAFTA one of the worst deals our country has ever made, signed by Bill Clinton. All withdraw from the deal under Article 2205. Second, I will announce our withdrawal from the Trans-Pacific Partnership, a potential disaster for our country. Third, I will direct my Secretary of the Treasury to labor China, a currency manipulator. China is a currency manipulator. What they have done to us by playing currency is very sad. And I don't blame them. They've been very smart. I blame our politicians for letting this take place. So easy to stop. So easy to stop. Fourth, I will direct the Secretary of Commerce and U.S. Trade Representative to identify all foreign trading abuses that unfairly impact American workers and direct them to use every tool under American and international law to end those abuses immediately. Fifth, 
very importantly, I will lift the restrictions on the production of $50 trillion worth of job producing American energy reserves, including, including shale, oil, natural gas, and clean coal. And we will put our miners back to work. Sixth, I will lift the Obama-Clinton roadblocks that allow for this vital energy infrastructure projects to go forward. We have roadblocks like you've never, ever seen. Environmental blocks, structural blocks. We're going to allow the Keystone Pipeline and so many other things to move forward. Tremendous numbers of jobs and good for our country. We're going to cancel billions in payments to the United Nations climate change programs and use the money to fix America's water and environmental infrastructure. We're paying billions and billions and billions of dollars. We're going to fix our own environment. Yeah. Additionally, on the first day, I will take the following five actions to restore security and constitutional rule of law. We have to do that. Cancel every unconstitutional executive action, memorandum, and order issued by President Obama. Second, begin the process of selecting a replacement for Justice Scalia, whose wife, by the way, has a Trump sign. His wife is a phenomenal woman. Has a Trump sign in her front yard. Isn't that nice? I just found that out this morning. Bum. Isn't that nice? He was great. From one of the 20 judges on my list, you know we're going to make great decisions from 20 outstanding judges on a list that we submitted who will uphold and defend the Constitution of the United States. Third, we will cancel all federal funding of sanctuary cities. Fourth, we will begin removing the more than two million criminal illegal immigrants from the country. These are our drug dealers, gang heads, gang members, killers, and cancel visas to foreign countries that won't take them back. And when Hillary Clinton was Secretary of State, and they had someone who was bad, really bad, and they brought him back to the country and the country wouldn't take him. She said, well, bring him back. We don't want to force the country to take him. There won't be one such instance if I become president, believe me. We're going to suspend immigration from terror-prone regions where vetting cannot safely occur. And if you look at Syria and the migration, we're taking in thousands and thousands of people into our country. We have no idea who they are, what their thought process is, where they come from. And Hillary Clinton wants to increase the number of those thousands and thousands currently pouring in by 550% radical Islamic terror is right around the corner. We have to be so tough, so smart, so vigilant. We can't allow that to happen. We have enough problems. All vetting of people coming into our country will be considered extreme vetting. We will be very careful. Next, I will work with Congress to introduce the following broader legislative measures and fight for their passage within the first 100 days of my administration. Middle Class Tax Relief and Simplification Act. 
an economic plan designed to grow the economy 4% per year and create at least 25 million new jobs through massive tax reduction and simplification in combination with trade reform, regulatory relief, and lifting the restrictions on American energy. We need that so badly. Jobs. We need jobs. Our jobs have left us. Our good jobs have really left us. The largest tax reductions are for the middle class, who have been forgotten. It's called the forgotten man and woman. They have been forgotten. The middle class with family of two children will get basically, approximately, a 35% tax cut. And that's what they can use. And that money will go back into the economy. <laughs> the current number of brackets will be reduced from seven to three. And tax forms will likewise be greatly simplified. <laughs> the business rate will be lowered from 35% to 15 percent, and the trillions of dollars of American corporate money overseas can now be brought back at a 10 percent rate. It's stuck. We can't bring it back. Two and a half to five trillion dollars. Companies can't get it back into the country. Some companies are actually leaving, not only because taxes are so high, but because they can't get their money, and they are actually leaving to get their money. We are going to simplify that. We're going to have them bring the money back into our country and use the money and spend the money on building our country. <laughs> End the Offshoring Act. Establish tariffs to discourage companies from laying off their workers in order to relocate in other countries and ship their products back to the United States tax-free. They leave the United States, like Carrier, like Ford, like so many others. They leave the United States. They fire all of their employees. They go to Mexico or another country. They build a beautiful brand new plant. They hire other people. They then take their air conditioners, their cars, whatever they're making. They send it tax-free across what will be a very strong border, believe me. But they send it tax-free across the border. And what do we end up with? We have unemployment, tremendous losses, and we have none of the benefits. So we will establish tariffs that when they do that, there will be consequences. We'll work with them, we'll be nice, we'll be fair, but there have to be consequences. And when they know there are consequences, our companies will stop leaving the United States and going to other countries. The American Infrastructure Act leverages public-private partnerships and private investments through tax incentives to spur $1 trillion in infrastructure investment over the next 10 years. Our infrastructure is in such trouble. We've doubled our national debt to $20 trillion under President Obama. In less than eight years, 10 trillion dollars has been added. Think of it. And we haven't fixed anything. We haven't fixed anything. What have we done? Our roads are broken, our bridges, our tunnels, our hospitals, our schools. And we have 20 trillion in debt, all time high. That's true. Our VA hospitals are in bad shape and our VA is in very, very bad shape. And we will fix that. We are going to work on fixing that because our veterans have not been treated properly. We have illegal immigrants that are treated far better in many instances than our veterans, and we're not going to have that. School Choice and Education Opportunity Act redirects education dollars to give parents the right to send their kid, their children, to public, private, charter, magnet, religious, or home schools of their choice. And so importantly, we're going to end Common Core and bring education supervision to local communities. We do so badly on education. If you look at the lists and you see Sweden, Norway, Denmark, China, different countries at the top, 
you see us at the bottom. And yet, by far, per pupil, more money than anybody, and it's not even close. We spend more money per pupil than anybody, not even close. We're at the bottom of the list. Other countries spending far less per pupil are at the top of the list. So obviously, our current system is not working. We will change it, and we will make it good. It expands vocational and technical education, which we've totally forgotten about in this country, and make two- and four-year colleges more affordable. Have you ever gone to school and you've been with people that aren't good students, but they can fix an engine, or they can build a wall, or they can do things that you wouldn't even think about? Because we can use some of the ones that build the wall. We're going to need them. We're going to need them. We're going to need them. But did you ever see that? How they're genius at fixing a car. They can do anything. But history, not so good. Physics, not so good. I mean, we have to open vocational again. Those are the people. They're, these are great people. The Repeal and Replace Obamacare Act. Fully repeal Obamacare and replace it with health savings accounts. So we can do that. The health savings accounts, it's one way. There are numerous ways. But this is one very good way. The ability to purchase health insurance across state lines, which we have to do because that's competition. The politicians won't let go of it because the insurance companies, they don't want competition. But we'll open it up. Believe me, we'll get rid of that. I've been saying it for years. And let states manage Medicaid funds. It will be so good. Reforms will also include cutting the red tape at the FDA. There are over 4,000 drugs awaiting approval. And we especially want to speed the approval of life-saving medications. I mean, they're looking at drugs that are looking very good. And you have terminal patients that it's over. These people, they're dying. They want to get the drug. They won't be living much longer. And we study it for years and years. At some point, they have to do what they have to do. They have to do it properly. But we have 4,000 different drugs and products waiting in line for approval, and we can't get them approved. We're going to speed up that process very significantly. Affordable Child Care and Elder Care Act allows Americans to deduct child care and elder care from their taxes, incentivizes employers to provide on-site, and so important, child care services. And you see that with a couple of companies, and it's such a great thing to see. And creates tax-free dependent care savings accounts for both young and elderly dependents with matching contributions for low-income families. So good. End Illegal Immigration Act. Fully funds the construction of a wall on our southern border. Don't worry about it. Remember, I said Mexico's paying for the wall. With the full understanding that the country of Mexico will be reimbursing the United States for the full cost of such a wall, okay? We're going to have the wall. Mexico's going to pay for the wall. Mexico's, by the way, I met with the president of Mexico two and a half months ago. Wonderful meeting, wonderful person. But I told him, this is a two-way highway, not a one-way highway. We have our people. We have to take care of our people. We have to protect our people. So it's got to be a two-way street. Otherwise, it's going to be a whole different deal. But it establishes a two-year mandatory minimum federal prison sentence. This is people coming in illegally for illegally re-entering the United States after a previous deportation, and a five-year mandatory minimum for illegally re-entering for those with felony convictions, multiple misdemeanor convictions, or two or more prior deportations. So when somebody comes in, we send them out. They come back in, they go to prison for quite a while. They come back, they come back again, they go five years.
because what's happening is they're coming back 10 times. And I could go case after case. They come back, uh, look at what happened in San Francisco. Five times he came back. On the fifth time, he killed Kate. Five times. But so many others. One 10 times came back, killed somebody after 10 times. When they get deported, they stay out. Otherwise, they have very serious prison terms. They will stay out. Once you do that, they will stay out. Right now, they have no consequence. They have no consequences. Also, reforms on visa rules to enhance penalties for overstaying and to ensure open jobs are offered to American workers first. Yeah. Number eight, Restoring Community Safety Act reduces surging crime, drugs, and violence by creating a task force on violent crime and increasing funding for programs that train and assist your local police who are doing such a great job, believe me. We increase the resources for federal law enforcement agencies and federal prosecutors to dismantle criminal gangs and put violent offenders behind bars or out of our country and into the country where they came from. <laughs> Restoring National Security Act, which rebuilds our military by eliminating the defense sequester, which has been very tough on our military, and expanding military investment. Now, at no time, practically, do we need a military like right now. We don't want to use it, but it's peace through strength. We need a strong military. Our military is so terribly depleted. It also provides our great veterans with the ability to receive public VA treatment or attend a private doctor of their choice. If they're waiting online, and I have the plan up, and we've gotten, as you know, tremendous support from veterans, from law enforcement, from veterans, from the military, tremendous support. But if they're waiting online, and you see it, 22 suicides a day, people don't even believe it, 22 a day. But if they're waiting in line for seven days, six days, nine days, they can't get to see a doctor. And a simple procedure or a simple prescription can solve their problem. And they become very sick. And they die. They die waiting in line. We're going to give them the power to go across the street to a local doctor, a private doctor, a public hospital, or a private hospital, all looking to help and all looking to do business and we'll pay the bill so much cheaper, but much more importantly, the veterans will finally be taken care of properly because what they're going through now is unacceptable. <laughs> also, we're going to protect our vital infrastructure from the new thing. It's called cyber attack. It establishes new screening procedures for immigration to ensure those who are admitted to our country support our people and our values. We want people that love our country or can love our country and people that will love our citizens. We want people that can love us. And here are ways through talent of determining that and other countries do, but we don't. Just come on in folks, come on in. Clean Up Corruption in Washington Act enacts tough new ethic reforms to reduce the corrupting influence of special interests and donors on our politics. On November 8th, Americans will be voting for this 100-day plan to restore prosperity to our country, secure our communities, and honesty to our government. This is my pledge to you. And if we follow these steps, we will once more have a government of, by, and for the people. And importantly, we will make America great again. Believe me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Donald J. Trump wrapping up remarks 
in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. Some are billing this as... We are all feeling tremendous anxiety with only a few weeks left to the election. This will be the most important election in American history. We were once a country of freedom, and now we're becoming a country of tyranny. We are witness to our own people burning down and looting our cities. Ferguson, Missouri, Milwaukee, Orlando, Florida, Baltimore. We are all witness to our own people killing our policemen. Islamic terrorists have killed thousands of people all over our country, and Hillary and Obama want to be politically correct and pretend all the killings are not happening. How many Americans are aware of George Soros, an evil man who turned hundreds of Jewish people over to the Nazis to be exterminated during World War II? He was interviewed on 60 Minutes and was asked, does he feel guilty for what he has done? And arrogantly he said, absolutely not. If I didn't do it, someone else would have. Soros is a billionaire who made most of his money manipulating currencies and almost bankrupting many countries. He supports hate groups who are responsible for taking down our cities. And he is a close friend of Hillary Clinton and a major supporter of her campaign. Robert De Niro is a millionaire as are so many of our Hollywood stars who are voting for Hillary, and who have absolutely no tolerance for anyone of a different opinion, but they will not be affected by Hillary's open borders. Only our poor and middle class will suffer. Thousands of refugees will, will flood our nation, and no one will know the good guys from the bad guys. It will kill our economy, and Hillary boasts of how proud she will be to continue Obama's legacy. No one can afford health insurance now. Prices for health care have gone through the roof, thanks to Obamacare. Our once reasonable health care is gone. With Hillary as president, we will lose our Second Amendment with our right to bear arms. Freedom of religion will be attacked. And Hillary will try to stop all conservative voices on TV and radio. Our highest courts will become socialist. And she will restrict what America was founded on, our freedom to become a small business owner and pursuing our own personal dreams.